Today's Band of Mothers podcast episode is brought to you by our friends at Goodbye Gear. It's a full service marketplace for buying and selling kid gear. They are redefining the secondhand market and making it super easy to get rid of or buy everything you need for a baby or kid at amazing prices. So if you are in Denver or Dallas and have items to sell, all that kid gear that you just, you know, you want to get rid of it, but you don't know where to start. They arrange for white glove pickup from your house, from your house. And they're amazing wing moms because it's moms who work for and run this company. They'll take pictures. They'll generate your listings for you. They'll suggest pricing and they'll store your items until they sell. Or you can just go online and shop because they offer nationwide shipping. So use the code pump and dump 10 for $10 to shop on goodbuygear.com for first time orders. $50 $50 minimum or for $10 off your first pickup. And if you want to know more about this awesome company, we did an episode about them. It was episode number 52. Um, and you can learn all about the amazing moms who um, created Goodbye Gear. Hi, I'm Shana. And I'm Tracy. And we are the creators of The Pump and Dump Show. We are moms, but we were women first. And in this podcast, we explore what it's like to be a woman who also happens to be a mom. What's up, breeders? Welcome back, breeders. Welcome to the Band of Mothers podcast. Band of Mothers podcast. We love you. Happy February. Happy February. We finally made it out of January. Oh my gosh. I saw a meme that was like, are there going to be any other months (laughs) in 2020? (laughs) Nope. Just January forever. I love January because I'm such a like goal person and I love like thinking ahead and like planning but it just went on for too long. It was a lot. It was a long month. I guess on the on the bright side, we're only in our second month of the year. And it already feels like we've been in 2020 for like 15 years. 2020. Well, I don't know. Ahead. Anyway, I hate February. Even Why? Though, well, it's just such a dark, cold, dreary month. I just don't. I don't love it. I mean, it's my husband's birthday is in February. So that's always fun. Yeah. But like on the first day. On the first day. And Valentine's Day, never really. You hate Valentine's Day. Don't, it's not, not a big fan. I feel, I'm warming to it now. I feel neither here nor there about the Valentine's Day these yeah. days. You've been married as long as we have. It doesn't really. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. It's fun for kids, though. Did I ever tell you my dad used to, he started probably when I was in high school. He And then when I was in college, for sure. He used to, like, send me and my sister, like, really nice presents. On like Valentine's Day? On Valentine's Day. Oh, that's like nice. Like one, one year he went to the Shane Company and bought some like pearl earrings that I would wow never wear. Like they weren't my style at all. But it was like the sweetest thing. Aww. And one year he sent me like this mug and saucer to like have at college to drink my coffee out of with a really nice note. And I like that. I like that Valentine's Day. I like... Like I like it if... Valentine's John- Day. <laughs> no, I like, I like love to your family. Like I like yeah. that. Yeah, that is sweet. That's sweet. Otherwise, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I used to really like it. Did you? Before I had love in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like as a kid, like I was like, well, like, for example, uh, my friend Gary and I met on the top of the Empire State Building in, it was like 10 years after we'd graduated high school, we decided we were going to go meet on top of the Empire State Building on Valentine's Day at sunset. And so the truth is you really just love Nora Ephron. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Old romantic comedies. But the funny part was he was living with me at the time in New York. So we actually just took the day and went, but it was zero sight. Like it was like the cloudiest, rainiest, oh most awful weather day. And so we got there. Of course, there was nobody in line to go up there. Like, why would anybody go up there? And the guy who was like manning the area yeah. turned this big sign around. So it was just a white background. And he goes, this is what you're going to see up there. And oh. we were like, we know, <laughs> What's but up, we have to Betty? go up there. So we just went up and couldn't see anything. And we're freezing cold. And we have a picture of us holding umbrella. Oh. Um, but we did it. So, yeah, I used to I used to be very romantic. And now I'm just like, sex tonight. Fine. 
very romantic. And this is my first year in her new school doing Valentine's. Like, I've never done that at school before. It sounds very stressful. Oh, because you, you, her old school, you couldn't do any holidays? We, we celebrated zero holidays. So it was delightful because I never had to worry about this whole Valentine's Day situation. But now I do. Yeah, I've gone the opposite where, like, the first couple years we made all You homemade. made them. Yeah. And then this year I'll be like, which Snoopy one can I, mean, I pick up at the Target? Um, okay, so, yeah, so speaking of kids, some of our favorite things. Oh, yeah, some of our favorite things this week are going to be kid-centric because mm-hmm. we've kind of been talking about how to get some moments to ourselves, put mm-hmm. on a mask, et cetera. But um, we have some tips that you might uh, – or some products that you might be interested in for your kids. Yeah. Um, so I have been reading, as a surprise to no one, a lot about the effects of blue light that comes off your screens, like from your computers and your phones and TVs even, mainly because I think I'm going blind at like a rapid pace. And I know it's just because I stare at my phone all day. Like my eyes are just, I gotta get my eyes checked again. Uh, but it's really bad for kids because we're raising like a whole generation of kids that have stared at screens their whole lives. But there's glasses that have like blue blocking filters. Shay's looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm not. <laughs> just everything's going to kill us. But go ahead. I know. Yeah. But you might as well just like preserve your eyes because it also messes up with your melatonin, which messes up with sleep at night. Yeah. Staring at those screens. So I got Evie this really cute pair of like blue blocking glasses. From <laughs> Wait, they're cute. They're so cute. They're pink. They're like a purple pink. They're metal. Oh. She looks so flapping cute. Now I can't even deal. OK. Um, They're from Blue Blocks, the same place where I got my sleep mask. That awesome sleep mask I talked about. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You're just laughing at me. I am not. I'm actually picturing my kids and I'm, and I'm very excited. They're so cute. And so she wears them. Of course, my kid, cause I tell her, she's like, I have to put my glasses on. She kind of likes them. She's like, mm-hmm. she thinks it's fun that she gets to wear glasses, but she's been working. They're doing writing projects at school. So she asked if she could bring them to school to wear when she's on her Chromebook. And I was like, yeah, okay. Just be careful. Cause they were kind of expensive. They were expensive. And she goes, Mom, like, there's so many kids that bring their blue blocks glasses to school. So it's a thing. I thought she was going to be like the weird kid that had like the weird glasses from the crazy mom who's afraid of blue light. But actually, people are buying them for their kids because it does really help. Okay. Let's check them out. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> because I can guarantee you that not one child at my kid's school wears blue blocks. But I would be very curious to see if we can implement it because I think it's important. You're right. <laughs> anyway <laughs> so much for talking about things that make you happy <laughs> I think it's great I think your face right now is killing me no 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 I I am this is my thinking face this uh-huh. is not a judgy face I'm uh-huh. into it and I do believe that it's hurting our eyes so I get it yeah so let's check it out I am learning along with our audience right now about the blue blocks I'm learning too we'll post it we'll put it in shop the podcast you guys can check it out and tell me if I'm crazy or not um, my kid thing this week is, uh, my son who's very into Minecraft, he, he, um, would, would really only read graphic novels on his own, but then we found these Minecraft books at Target and it really transitioned him super quickly into reading a chapter book that doesn't have pictures. So there's some pictures like the beginning of yeah. chapters and stuff. He's seven, by the way, he's in second grade. And loving the Minecraft books. So if you're at Target, they're like $7 a book. I think there's four in the series. What are they called? Minecraft Wood Sword Chronicles. Which, by the way, I don't know anything about Minecraft. So I was like, oh, Wood's Word. And my son was like, no, honey. He didn't call me honey. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, no, honey. <laughs> no, honey. <laughs> it's Wood Sword. I feel like Wood Sword... I could go a lot of directions. I feel like they could have chosen a little something better. I prefer Wood's Word. Uh, I just. <laughs> no, anyway. Wood, so- wood, wood Sword Chronicles. Wood sword, because apparently that's a thing in Minecraft. Okay, I have no idea. Right. But he's very into it. And if your kid is like, I know we've struggled finding things that they're just interested in reading. So when I do find something that's easy and cheap and like, like, by all means, check them out next time you're at the Target. And graphic novels, our daughters both love um, the Raina Telgemeier books. Mm-hmm. Um, for years, they've been reading them like over e- and over. I mean, yeah. Now they just read them so fast. And I was just telling Shana when I got here that Evie checked out um, Sisters from the library at school. And 
like was just sitting in the middle of the floor of the kitchen this morning, just reading it. Like they're so fun and they're cool graphic novels. We actually went to uh, a book signing with her and heard her talk and Georgia and Evie heard her talk and she's just got a cool perspective and her books are really thoughtful and thought provoking and perfect for that kind of nine, eight, nine, ten, maybe. I mean, I feel like our girls were reading them earlier too. Well, they're only nine. I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they're not hard, but they're, they're great. And they're um, a really fun graphic novel. And as a like snobby English major, I kind of always turn my nose up at graphic novels, but I have a very deeper appreciation for them now, especially the work that, you know, goes into it and the thought and just all of it. They're yeah, cool. for sure. So we'll, uh, we'll link all those books mm-hmm. um, and, and shop the podcast. And shop the podcast on our app. So download the Band of Mothers app if you haven't. We have it on Android and iOS. Um, also, there has been, there has been a brand new, uh, functionality update that we're super excited about. So if you have not updated your app and you've had it like for over the past week, please um, update it because now the really, really exciting thing is that you have one main feed that tells you what's going on in all of your groups. So if you're in, you know, six or seven different groups, you don't have to be jumping in and out of the groups to see who posted and what. Um, It's just all on one feed you guys yeah and that's always been our vision so we've been waiting for this big update um but what this allows you to do is join groups which is the whole point of our band of mothers app that you can really drill down and have little communities around subjects that are near and dear to you if you're trying to conceive if you're homeschooling there's sex and you know relationships Relationship, yeah. and wellness and woo woo and amazon and yeah purchases. and lgbtq <laughs> parents and all these different like micro groups um, so that, but you'll see everybody's updates on your, on your feed. But then if you really want to go into that group and search, it's just easier to look at posts from people who are sharing the same experiences as you. So you can pop into those and just read the posts in that group mm-hmm. and hopefully find the support you need, which is the whole point of the app. Yeah. So we're really excited about that coming out. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, uh, the app is still in beta, however. So there's, it's a little glitchy and just DM us or because Tracy and I are active on the app every day. Um, just let us know what kind of issues you're having because we're getting them solved as soon as we can, so we can actually. Yeah, launch feedback this sucker. is feedback is great. And um, speaking of feedback, if you've downloaded the app and you enjoy it, we would love it if you left a review on the App Store. Um, we don't really understand how it works, but we do know that it helps. <laughs> so reviews for the app, reviews for this podcast, um, help us feed our children. And we would greatly appreciate it. In the, in the words of my daughter pretending to have a YouTube channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> and share, share, share. Always, if you if you think the app is useful for another mom, please, please tell her about it. Mm-hmm. And same with this podcast. Any of these episodes that you like, if you think that one's relevant for a friend, Easily shareable. Sharing is caring. Sharing <laughs> is caring, caring about us and your friends. That's yes. what being a mother's is all about. And send us pictures of you and your blue blocks reading uh, our apps, please. <laughs> I still haven't even gotten it. I mean, I you got, haven't gotten a pair. Well, no, they're expensive, so I bought them for my kiddo first. Right. I'm already going blind, so I just figure I'd save her eyes before mine. <laughs> but I'm going to get them. Um, maybe they'll give us a discount since we talked about them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, today's episode, we're getting back to the mom sphere. We're really going to talk about mom shaming, about um, what it's like to be a mom blogger and a mom influencer with um, Wine and Cheese It's Rachel Sobel. Um, and I think it's a really enlightening conversation because we really kind of dig in to, you know, relationships mom to mom what it's like to be a good mom friend, what it's like to be a bad mom friend, and what it feels like. And just, you know, we talk about it a lot, but dissecting all of the (sighs) layers of emotion that involve living in a digital age and interacting Mm -hmm. with moms in a digital space. And you may, you know, we, we all like roll our eyes at influencers or bloggers or people that do put their lives out there, but you don't really know what it feels like to be on the other end of that. Um, And Rachel is kind enough to kind of let us in and share. And she's so funny and wonderful and follow, uh, wine and cheese. It's if you guys don't already, I mean, everyone does, but it's at wine 
W H I N E. Like you're whining and you're getting Cheez Its. Wine and Cheez Its with Rachel. She's amazing. So enjoy this conversation. Our special guest today, we are so excited to have her on the pod, is Rachel Sobel. She is an author, writer, humorist, blogger of the infamous Wine and Cheez-Its. And welcome, Rachel. Thank you. And I love being called infamous. Of all the things that you could have called me, that is up there. Is it? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's notorious. I was just going to say better infamous or notorious. I mean, listen, I don't know how much time you've spent on my feed, but I have like a major obsession with 90s hip hop. So I'll take notorious. And that's true. You do. I've spent tons of time on your feed. I've followed you for years. So same, same girl, same. Same girl, same. So we're so excited to talk to you today. Um, you and I have spoken briefly and just kind of like, what are we going to talk about? Because you, you know, obviously you're a mom, you've been married twice, you're very open about your journey to sort of happiness and balance and family and all that good things. But um, today we're really going to focus on mom to mom connections, which is so great because I think your, your values and your, uh, torch you carry is very aligned with ours, um, our whole band of mothers thing, which is just getting moms to support each other, love each other for who they are, where we are right now. Mm-hmm. And um, less uh, eye rolls, more slaps on the ass. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Let's make it happen. Yeah. 2020. 2020. It, it is 2020. It's time to evolve, but it doesn't always, doesn't always go that way. No, it really doesn't. There's too much judgment and shaming and it's sad because as I said to you when we spoke, motherhood really is a sisterhood. And I know it sounds so cheesy, but it is. You are bound to so many relatable moments with mothers everywhere. And we take it for granted sometimes and judge what other people are doing. We're all guilty of it on some level, but it's there are some that are worse than others. And when I see it now, it's so egregious um, the way other women are treating each other. And it hurts my heart because we have to be in this together. Motherhood is hard. It's hard. Mm-hmm. So what are you seeing when you say you see how other women are treating each other? What are you seeing? So I think there's the in real life component, right? And there's the social media component. component. Sorry, we could have IRL. IRL. Yes. That's <laughs> like the kids say, right. IRL. Um, I think that social media has helped us in a lot of ways as mothers because there's so many resources and you have exposure to so much more content, but it's also destroyed us because we judge what each other posts. There are people who just do not live a real life online and do the whole hashtag blessed every second with the flowers their husband is giving them and their kids speaking three languages and working on a thesis at four years old. And there's just all this fakeness out there. And so I personally have just seen, especially being in South Florida, which is very small and everyone knows everyone, everyone's kind of like in each other's business in not a healthy way. I mean, they just have something to say about everything. And there's the judgment, the shaming, the passive aggressiveness, like, oh, your child has a pacifier and she's four. Well, what's going to happen? Like, is she not going to be a functioning adult because she has a pacifier? And I think that in the first part of my life, when I was married to someone else and had a toddler, I think I fell victim to being on the receiving end of that and feeling like I was doing everything wrong and feeling so much pressure to do motherhood a certain way. And it took me, I think, 43 years of life and another marriage and another baby and blending a family to just not care, to just do it my own way. But I think there's so many women who are stuck in that first example. And it makes me sad because you should rock motherhood the way you want to rock it and not let that noise in your head. But I think too many women fall victim to it. And why? Why do you think we're falling victim to... Um, pressure to look like you have it together, pressure to look like you are slaying motherhood every day, which is a complete unrealistic view because we know what it's like to get kids out the door. It's like herding cats, right? We know what it's like to open their lunchbox and see they've eaten nothing. We know what it's like to get reports from teachers saying, oh, she pushed or she kicked or whatever it is. We all experience that, but nobody talks about the bad parts. They all, they take the good parts, they wrap them up a nice little package, they post it on social media for everyone to see, and they keep that other part like a facade, a secret. And I think if we talked about that stuff more and were more vulnerable and open, I don't think there would be as much pressure. I think we would all connect on such a different level because you're like, oh, your kid throws broccoli across the room too? Awesome. You're my people. 
we don't talk about those things. We just feel like we always have to present this picture of being that superstar soccer mom that is like never forgetting to bring snacks for a game, which Mm -hmm. I'm sure many people forget to bring the snacks on their day. Or just just forget the game. Right. Or the wrong time or whatever it is. And I, I think as I've gotten more comfortable in my skin, I revel in those moments. I think it's hilarious to celebrate our flaws and talk about the stupid mistakes we made. And you send your kid to school on a theme day and it's not really the theme day and it was the next day. Like, I think that those things are really funny and make us human. And we're so scared to make mistakes and and then talk about making those mistakes. Yeah. You know what I always find, like even before social media, the way that parenting is portrayed just on television alone or in movies, you're just like, <laughs> you, you didn't even, you, is your, you have kids, they're in your house. What right. You it's so mean? clean. You know it's I mean? so like, clean. There's, there's like this whole, I'm always constantly like amazed at how like, oh, so your kid's just quietly eating their breakfast over there while you have this, you know, very dramatic fight with your husband and your three piece suit with your hair already done and your makeup perfect and the apron. Yep. Yeah. Or even when you look messy, you're like messy with eyeliner. Well, and it's, um, it's comedic, right? When it's messy, it's like, oh my gosh, can you believe this one crazy thing that happened? You know? And, (laughs) and even, I always have a problem with just childbirth portrayed in in television because it's, it's all comical there's nothing pure or sacred about it and it's the woman going Aah! and right. it's like very it's like very um just clean well yeah <laughs> no, right. Not, there's, right right what's the word I'm looking for it's very uh unadulterated no it's like it's a formula it's a formula for how you give birth on television right you know right. It's, um, they make you look, they make it look like you look fresh and revived and you just pop out that baby and there's no gross stuff ever. I mean, it is, childbirth is disgusting. It's a but miracle, or, but it's disgusting. Yes, but it's, it's also, disgusting. but, but in the meantime, but then it's like, oh, and here's the part where the woman goes a little insane. And it's <laughs> right. You know? right. And it doesn't actually account for <laughs> the fear you're feeling and the, the heartbreak you're feeling and the pain you're feeling. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, look at her grunt. Isn't that funny? And she's spreading her legs now and leaning forward. Oh, there's the baby, you know, like yeah, it's easy. Crack. Just like that. Like, Just yeah. like that. Yeah. It is very, it's interesting. And it's, it's funny because my, I ended up in the hospital multiple times with my second pregnancy because I was geriatric. I was 39 and really old to have a baby. Gross. So I know. I, I, I'm amazed we be, I'm like, I'm like Sophia. Yeah. I'm like Sophia from Golden Girls. I basically had a baby when I was, eight, <laughs> but my daughter was with me one time because I had to go to the ER because I was, I had something going on. Who knows what it was at that point. And she's standing in labor and delivery with me and I'm waiting to be seen. And there is a woman next door who clearly had no drugs, no nothing, was doing it natural. Good for you. Like high five grunting in the most guttural way I've ever heard. And I look at my daughter and she goes, what is that? I'm like, that's motherhood, babe. That's a that is the beginning of motherhood. But you're right. It goes to your point that the way that we perceive things because of what is shown to us, whether it's TV, social media. I mean, how many pictures have you seen of people that you know in your Facebook feed who have a baby and they're, they're sitting there holding the baby and their hair is all done. And, oh, they're sure. up, and I'm like, who, how do you do that? I mean, I, I look like a wildebeest after I have a child. I don't look <laughs> camera ready. Yeah. No, oh. every mom has that picture where she's looking down at her baby and she's <laughs> already chin. been, and it's like eight chins. Every mom has that photo. Do they? Because I always thought yes. it was only me. It's and I, I, no. I, I mean, I had legit <laughs> six <laughs> looked my one, my one bucolic picture. I looked like Jabba the Hutt just gave birth. <laughs> To a perfect angel, let's be clear. But like, what? There was no glow. There was no like. It was real, and I was so embarrassed to share that photo because I was going to say you probably didn't post it. No, right? Of course not. So we see this like microcosm of what goes on in life, whether it's childbirth or picky, whatever it is, whatever milestone, a like area you're at in motherhood. We see the good parts. We just see the good parts. And I was so sick of seeing the good parts because that's not motherhood and it's not life. And it really was the impetus be- behind why I started writing and doing all this. But I noticed that the people who flock to me are the people who crave that realness. And it makes me 
excited that there's that many people who really want it. But then I look around at why they're craving it. And it's because the rest is just this concocted sugar coated tales of motherhood, because women are so scared to be themselves around other women for fear of how they're going to be perceived as mothers. If you complain about your kid, and say, my child's driving me crazy, there are people who look at you as less of a mother, that you must not love your kids. And you, why did you even have kids? I mean, comments like that happen all the time. Why are we not allowed so to vent? Small, by the way. Right, right. So right. we don't really get a ton of that on Band of Mothers. You know, we've been lucky so far. I mean, probably because we just are like, hey, none of that. <laughs> we won't accept it. Mm-hmm. But we have gotten, there's been like a couple times where, where someone posted some like mom shaming meme that's like, If you think that because you go out with your friends, you're taking care of yourself. No, you should be home taking care of your child. This is the biggest gift that God could give you. And to those people, I just want to say, fuck you. Because you're ruining ruining motherhood. You know, not only fuck you, that person needs to be out more than anybody. That will that's the point, right? You are it's 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 psychologically impossible to live in a bubble with just children and not have connection to other adults. Like Mm -hmm. there, you know, you are as humans, we require conversation and connection with people of our same age Mm -hmm. to keep you literally to keep you sane. Otherwise, you're just in solitary confinement with some crazy people and you will never make it out ever. But it's just crazy. I mean, it's like you're saying about, you know, look at your feeds and see how many people have these beautiful births. I, I don't see a lot of that in my, in my close circles, but I, I see that moms see it and I see how it affects moms. And I see why people are craving communities like yours, like wine and cheese. It's and like the band of mothers, because that does exist. And it kind of still baffles me. I kind of feel like I'm on the outside of that looking in being like, well, why would I follow that mom who literally has a camera crew following her around all day <laughs> with her four kids? And also look at her face. Like nobody's face is that perfect. No, I just feel terrible about myself. Mm-hmm. It's but so people, bad. I don't know. What do you think it is inside of us as moms? The people who do need that, who need that perfection in front of them. Like what is, what is happening to us? I think motherhood kind of comes with a whole new set of insecurities, right? Like you're before you're a mother, you're going out whenever you want to go out, whether it's to dinner or for night out with the girls, you're, you can sit in your bed and eat chips and salsa and binge watch Bravo. Like you can do whatever you want because you have no obligations. You can wear what you want. You can put makeup on, you can do your hair, you can wear heels. You can do all those things that you feel like you want to do to make yourself feel pretty and like a woman and all the things that we're conditioned to feel. Then you have a child and your body goes to shit everything just falls. You feel, you probably, you know, everyone goes through some level of emotional stuff, whether it's just, you know, the emotional aspect of having a baby, whether it's postpartum depression, like there are so many varying aspects of what we deal with in the physical and mental load of motherhood that I think that we see these pictures of perfection. And even though we know in our head, it's not real life, you look at it and you're like, why can't I look that put together holding a baby so nicely wrapped in a blanket with my hair fresh and done and a little bit of nude lipstick on. And I'm getting back to myself. Like you, I think there's part of us that still feels like we want that, even if it doesn't reconcile with what you're truly feeling in your head. That's how we're conditioned. We see women dressed to the nines going into an office or going to a PTA meeting or going wherever. And we feel this like trigger that, wait, should I be doing that? Should I want to look like that? And then you, your head just gets all messed up because it's not real. I mean, how many, how many stains do you have on every shirt in your closet from the time your kids were babies or someone got ketchup on you or whatever it is. And you don't even notice because you're so checked out doing so many things for your kids that you're putting yourself last. And I think we have to strike a balance because I do think sane mothers and happy mothers are better mothers, but everyone's degree of what makes them happy is different. And for some people, it's that vanity. It's, it's knowing it makes them feel better, good, bad, or indifferent that they can walk at their house and look like they just stepped out of a salon. Whereas some of us don't care about that. We just want to get somewhere on time, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has different thresholds for what makes them feel whole as a mother. But I think societally, and because of what we see on social media, online, and all these publications, it's a very skewed perception of what motherhood looks like. You know, it's funny, you're talking about that. And I even think about um, magazine covers, which have come a long way. And even Mm -hmm. I'm going to call out like parents, you know, like Busy Phillips was on the cover and it's her kids and it's this tableau. 
and it's like this sort of Pinterest chaos, right? There's like a perfectly made cake that's toppled over and (laughs) there's like toys that are all wood that are disheveled, but the children are in $300 outfits and busy is standing there in this like thousand dollar dress with her hair, like looking sort of bemused at the whole thing. And even though it's alluding to the idea that you're holding up chaos, it presents it in a way that like it's still it's beautiful. Be beautiful. It's beautiful exactly. chaos. Yeah. Well, and it's like, who was the one? Be, yeah. You should still be beautiful about it all. You know, who, who was the actress? Was it Rachel McAdams that did the cover with the breast pumps and she was like glammed out. Like she looked beautiful and she had a breast pump on that was fully visible. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think it was on Vogue. Yeah. I don't know, but I remember seeing that picture and thinking good for her that like she is because there's so much shaming about breastfeeding and pumping and all that stuff in public good for her that she's doing this but then I looked at it and I was like but she looks fucking beautiful no like if woman. I had a smoky eye, on her tits. Right, <laughs> it looks smoky like eye with pumps hanging as I'm like a basically a human dairy and I look like that I would walk around in public like that every fucking day <laughs> if yeah. that's what I look like so you're right where I think magazines and online publications are trying harder to depict the reality but they still have art directors who are looking at all their stuff and they want it to be pretty and they want it to sell and they don't want to put a picture of a real mother with her gut hanging out because she still hasn't lost her you know little baby poof that never goes away um and it's funny because I find when I talk about that stuff and I'm very real about it I don't get shamed by the people who are feeling it I get the thank you so much I was feeling this too I get shamed by the people who are like fitness gurus who are like shame on you there is a way to get back you know you can get your body back you're just not trying and I'm like holy shit so I can't talk about having loose skin yeah hold hold please (laughs) I want to hear I want to hear more of that like what what people actually write you and say oh, you're not yeah. hard enough. Yeah. Because, yeah. Now are you is that is was that in reaction to you telling, you know, basically being like, ladies just don't worry yeah, about your body I, or yeah, I think I posted something about food and how I mean I love food and I think I posted like a, I don't know if it was a meme or a picture and I made a joke about how I would love to have a six pack, but I also love, you know, three slices of pizza at a sitting and I'm just going to live my life and do what makes me happy and not worry. I'm okay. Having a little bit of extra. And I got DMS from just people who are so into the whole fitness aspect of things, which again, I respect you do you, but basically shaming me that I am sending a bad message because women should feel like it's not unreachable to get their body back. Well, I don't care if they think it's unreachable or not. I'm telling you how I feel. I'm okay with a little bit of extra around. That happens all the time. Um, Anytime I post anything about getting aggravated with my kids or getting frustrated with my kids, like we all do, I get DMs also, like maybe you shouldn't have kids. You know, Are these people parents? Um, A lot of them are parents, but you know, and here's the thing too. In the beginning, I used to take it because I used to say, you know what? My page is public. My page is public. I'm inviting people to express their opinions. Who am I to tell people what I think or feel? And then I said, this is bullshit. This is my page. This is a non-mom shaming page. And so I got drunk with power and basically started deleting people, blocking people. And now I'm okay with it. Before I felt like a little bit of a fraud because I'm like, is it okay that I'm filtering out the shit? Then I'm like, no, it's, it is okay because I built this community for everyone to feel good about themselves and feel like they have a safe space to vent about whatever it is that is making them crazy, whether, whether it's the extra five pounds they have or the kid that will not stop sucking her thumb or the husband that doesn't put his laundry in the hamper. I want us to all connect on that level and know that it's normal. And I don't need that noise of someone telling me that I'm not allowed to feel that way. So it's a complicated mix because you put yourself out there. I mean, listen, I don't have, my content is me. It's me. So I put myself out there every day and open myself up to these assholes who always have something to say, but I kind of have to be strong and not let it get to my head. And, but I'm human and I have to shut it down and I have to do it for the sake of my community. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy because people are insane insane. You can't even imagine the messages that I see over stupid things. I posted a meme with a bunch of Target bags the other day. Like it wasn't even my picture. It was a meme. How dare you not recycle? What is wrong with you that you're hoarding those Target bags? I'm like, dude, it's not even my picture. It's a stock photo. Like people just behind a keyboard are very brave. And I think that it has become a way for people who are miserable in some aspects of their lives to take it out on whatever they see in that, that moment and just 
vent. Like to them, I think it's a therapy session without realizing how bad and shaming they sound. I just think they need it on some level. This is so interesting because I think a lot of our listeners, you know, follow a lot of people like yourself and never really think about that side of it. You know, you're just a mom like the rest of us Mm -hmm. and you're doing something for moms and you've created something that's your brand. And like you said, it's your thoughts and your posts. And this is something that you've been working hard on for years and years. And yet you're the one that has to face all of this criticism from mm-hmm. people behind their keyboards who think they have power. It's always and, a fascinating always. world of the, the blogger, the current, the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The culture. Yeah. And this current internet. culture of but, the internet. You know, but then what happened to having civilized discussions with dissenting opinions? Because right. you could easily say if you were say, um, very pro health or pro fitness or pro or anti pizza. Okay. No, there's <laughs> one person. So who only wants to the them killers are anti pizza? They yeah, have fuck you too, is what I say. First of all, you are deeply unhappy. And <laughs> I, I, I hope it's because of an allergy or you just don't like the taste right. and it's placed with hamburgers or pasta. Right. You know, um, <clears throat> but it's, you know, I, I struggle because on one hand, and we preach it too, like we're all in this together. We're all doing this. We're all doing the best we can. Don't shame, support each other. Every mom is making the right choice, but you know, sometimes we don't make the right choices. Sometimes we are lazy or complacent and we do just phone it in and we're not dialed into our kids or that's called (laughs) self-care. No, but we, we are, you know, you know, we aren't perfect parents. And a lot of us, you know, make systemic mistakes day after day. And at what point can we, can we have conversations? Can you, I, I don't know the answer because we're, first of all, our, our sphere of conversation is so broad when it's Mm -hmm. involved online, right? You're not Mm -hmm. having just uh, three friends sitting around Mm -hmm. with coffee and and you're, the way you communicate is very different when it's IRL Mm -hmm. in real life. And so at what point can you offer a dissenting opinion that's respectful and, and say, Hey, I actually don't think that that's a great idea. And is that okay? Are we allowed to do that anymore? Or we're totally allowed to do that. We're totally allowed to do that. But I think, like you said, it has to be respectful. And I think if you're coming hot and you're like, I do not agree with anything you're saying, this is ridiculous. That is like, everyone's defenses go up because you're yeah, coming into the attack. Yeah. Whereas if you say something along the lines of, you know, I never thought of it from that perspective. I don't necessarily agree with you, but I see where you're coming from. That's like a way to show support, but also show that you are, you don't agree. And nobody's going to, not everyone's going to agree with me. I am not everyone's cup of tea. That's okay. There's also an unfollow button. You don't have to come in hot and start getting crazy. And I always say that if you don't like things that you're reading on my page or anyone's page, you are welcome to leave at any time. This is not a cult. You are not trapped here, but people just love the confrontation. And I can only imagine the reason they love the confrontation is they're just confrontational people. Or like I said, they need to get something out and they can't take it out on somebody in their real life. So they look for someone where there's no consequences to them. They don't consider the fact that we are real people and we're not just sitting behind a keyboard churning out memes all day. And they don't realize how similar we are. They're just looking for someone to be the scapegoat. And it's very easy for someone you've never met that you have no emotional connection with to be the scapegoat. We are interrupting today's podcast episode to remind you that this episode is brought to you by Goodbye Gear. Goodbye Gear is a mom-run company revolutionizing the way parents buy and sell gently used children's gear online. When you can sign your items, Goodbye Gear does all the heavy lifting. Quality checks, photos, descriptions, pricing and shipping and delivery. And then when your items sell, you're notified in real time and you get paid. Paid. Yeah. (laughs) But you can also just shop at goodbyegear.com where you can find everything from toys to strollers to high chairs, all quality checked at amazing prices delivered straight to your door. Goodbye Gear is truly the definition of moms supporting moms. This is Band of Mothers in action, you guys. And this company is going to change everything for moms moving forward. So if you're interested, use code pump and dump 10 for $10 off to shop on goodbyegear.com for first time orders with a $50 minimum, or you can get $10 off your first pickup. That's pump and dump 10 
at goodbuygear.com. And they're expanding, but right now they're in Denver and Dallas. So if you're in Denver or Dallas, you can get the white glove pickup or you can go to their warehouse and shop um, or drop off and pick up from their warehouse. But if you live anywhere else, there is shipping all across the country. So you can just go online and shop secondhand stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, this isn't Craigslist uh, scary. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. This is people who have reviewed every single centimeter of the products that they're reselling to make sure that they're high quality and in good shape. So enjoy. We'd also like to let you know that Band of Mothers podcast began as a live show called The Pump and Dump Show, which just started its shows for winter spring this past week. The Pump and Dump Show is a live interactive Music and comedy show featuring all original music written by Miss Shana Firm herself. Um, no parodies here. This is stuff that came from the heart and soul of me and Shay. And now our two awesome new casts who are performing coast to coast. We have over 40 shows. I guarantee you we are probably in a city near you. So check out all of our dates on thepumpanddumpshow.com or you can go Download the Band of Mothers app and click the events section and everything is right there at your fingertips. That's right. And the Pump and Dump Show is really a night for commiseration, validation, and an hour and a half with nobody touching your boobs. You deserve it, ladies. So grab your breeder friends and make a night of it. And now back to our interview with Rachel Sobel from Wine and Cheese its But the magical thing that I see ha happen, I don't know if you guys witnessed this because you said you don't get a lot of mom shamers. The magical thing I see happen when you build a community around you and your, your thoughts and like-minded people is that when people come in like that, sometimes I don't even see it before all of my people go for them. Mm. Like they will go for them in the comments and be like, what is wrong with you? She's posting this because of X, Y, Z. And you're going to, I mean, like I have a whole army of people who we all support each other to a flaw and so when they see it before I do I have so much support and I have to think it's because I'm showing support and so it's it's cyclical but it's really interesting to see that happen because people are not having it anymore if if people know that you're a good person and your intentions are good and you're real and you're authentic they're much more likely to back you and to have your back and to be that support system versus the ones who are just like coming in rogue and going crazy and spewing their hate everywhere and then eventually having to be blocked. Mm -hmm. God, who are these people? It's so yeah. upsetting to me. <laughs> you just... are welcome to, we listen, we can meet IRL and I will pull up my Instagram. We can sit next to each other or I'll just, I'm going to just start sending you guys screenshots of the messages and comments. Yeah. I don't want, I, I, it makes me so sad. I feel like an eight year old woman. I'm just like, they do that on the internet. Like, <laughs> So yeah. upsetting to me, especially mom to mom. I mean, yeah. you know, Tracy, I think you're completely correct in the sense that people do make bad choices, right? Like we're not always making the best choices. Um, and it's, you know, at a certain point we've had to learn because we, you know, send the message that everyone's doing the best they can, that sometimes people aren't doing the best they can. And obviously there's always exceptions. Somebody can be abusive or mm -hmm. well, make, extreme. Sure. Yeah. Extreme. Right. Um, but for the most part, it just seems like, I, I think, I think where this self-consciousness comes from is it like starts on ourselves, right? It starts with the guilt we feel, uh, even if social media didn't exist, right? Like mm -hmm. before it existed, every choice that we make as moms, we second guess every, oh, absolutely. You know, I'm still kicking myself today for choices I made with my kids when they were little. Like if I had done this differently, maybe this would be different now, or mm -hmm. I can't believe how long I let him have a bottle or, mm -hmm. you know, certain choices that we make. So already that exists within us. We are already extremely insecure. Mm -hmm. And then you put social media on top of that, which exacerbates all of our insecurities. And so how do we, I feel like you kind of have to start at the root. Like how do we get rid of our I don't know if you do. I, I just think being a mom is flipping hard. Well, and I think there's this quest yeah. for uh, solving the equation. Mm -hmm. You know, if we all knew, you know, it's still up in the air whether or not giving your kid a bottle is going to ruin them, right? Like right. that that answer, I, I only breastfed for a few months. My daughter is fine and very healthy, but there's never going to be anything in my, a part of my brain that's always going to wonder 
-hmm. how bad did I fuck it up? You know? Mm -hmm. And so there's these, and we, we're constantly striving and that's what moms do. You want to solve the equation. You want to fix the problem. You want to do it right so that they don't feel pain. Mm -hmm. And so we're yeah. constantly trying to find the solution um, because that's our, I think that's just our inherent nature, but we're forgetting the process, I think, of how you do that. Well, and I don't think there's a solution. That's the thing right. is I don't, I really don't. Okay. I think that, yeah. I think that self-imposed, self-imposed mom guilt is almost worse than the mom guilt and shaming you get from others because you can't turn it off. You have, like you said, you have these thoughts like, did I give them the bottle too long? Did I, should I have taken the pacifier away earlier? Is it my fault they're a picky eater? Like all of these things. And then you have the outside noise on top of it. And it's like a perfect storm that makes you feel like you are failing as a mother if you really allow it to get in your head. And I think that all of that stuff is why going, bringing things full circle, why there's the mom shamers, why there's people coming out of the woodwork, making comments that really have nothing to do in any realistic view whatsoever, but they just can't help themselves. We just need to like have an opinion about everything. Like everybody has something to say about everything. Guess what? If they're not your children, you don't get to say when the past fire gets taken away. You it's, don't. Before social media, it was just mother-in-laws. <laughs> oh, right. The, you know what I mean? Like what? all the shamers right. on social media are just going to be those asshole mother-in-laws. <laughs> but, oh, can I, have I told yes. you this? That's what is, they should change the name of Facebook. It should not be Facebook. It should be <laughs> mother-in-law on steroids, something like that. The mother-in-law network. I don't know. You're right. You're totally right. I think I've totally. told this before on the pod, but I'll say it again. So my mother-in-law is lovely and beautiful and would never like, she's like a, she's Scottish. She's a she's, delicate flower. She's just this lovely. <laughs> Love her. She's so, she, and she just loves us and loves my kid and everything. So she grew up in Scotland in like, um, Protestant Scotland. Like nobody drank. It was very strict. Sounds it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when she had her first son, the church would show up unannounced just to check in to see if the house was clean, if how it was doing. And she said, when her son was born, you, you lived in fear of the doorbell ringing. And so you spent your day getting the house ready for someone who was going to come over unannounced to literally to walk in your house and judge you and then report back to the community. That is so savage. And those Stop four it. women, can you imagine though, how that impacted their never entire it. journey? Right. And I'm sure that even though, no matter how lovely she is, she must have certain triggers that when she sees you or your husband doing something like she probably wants to say something because she's conditioned from everything she went through. Like that sticks with you. That doesn't go away. You never lose it. And it, yeah. and then that passes on generation to generation and you, you know, so it's, it's, you know, and we've talked about this. This is why, you know, feminism is kind of it, this, this organic sort of evolution right now because we're realizing I mean since the beginning of time this there is this benchmark of of that are, is expected of women that is completely unattainable and I don't know where did it come from the bible is it just men who just want to you know, I'd say, but then we do it to each other on top of it. We do. It's like, a it's bad cycle. It's bad. And it's funny because I think about your mother-in-law and think about the things she was exposed to that started the whole cycle of mom guilt in her, right? Imagine how much more there is now. Like there are mom shamers for everything. You get shamed if you drink wine. You get shamed. It's horrible you drink wine. You get shamed if you don't because what's wrong with you? Like you can't no. win. You can't no. fucking win because no matter which side you're on, there is someone waiting to like come in and go for the jugular and tell you why you're wrong. It's why there's the term sanctum mommies, mm -hmm. which, you know, they believe that you, you, everything you're doing is wrong and they have all the answers. There's these factions of people who have just deemed themselves experts with no, they don't have what they have a, a degree from Facebook. I don't understand like what makes them <laughs> experts, but they do. They really, they speak like they are standing on a pulpit on a soapbox for everyone to hear. And it is based in nothing. You are not an expert in my children. I am the only expert in my child. My children, I don't even know what I'm doing. So how can you be an expert in my children? It's, it's just this bad habit we all get into where we get so concerned with what everybody is saying and doing and everyone plays their role. And it's just, it's got to stop because they're, listen, I'm well adjusted. I can laugh at myself. I have a good sense of self-deprecating humor. Yes, I have demons that mess with me because of past experiences, but all in all, I have it pretty together. I'm comfortable in my skin. It took me a long time to get there. I look at women 
who are my age or younger, and I can see in their eyes they're suffering. I can see that they're having a hard time, but they're so scared to speak up and say anything because they don't want to be pegged as having postpartum because that's a horrible thing to have. They don't want to be looked at moms who don't love their children every second of the day. They don't want to be perceived as women who should not have had kids because they can't hack it. There's all these things that they they have a fear for admitting that sometimes it sucks. And guess what? Sometimes motherhood sucks. It does. It's a fact. It's like impossible for me to imagine somebody who can, it's, I mean, children are not like nobody has a great attitude every single second. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so now you have these people who are pulling on you and needing you and physically hurting you and not letting you poop by yourself. Mm -hmm. There's just no way that these people who these, these, these people think that there's just no yin to the yang. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. And it's, I really admire you for, you know, putting yourself out there. Tracy and I, you know, we have social accounts because we need to for our business. Um, and I don't think we've ever not put ourselves out there because we were afraid of what people would say. I don't, no. I wouldn't say that that's it at all. But it it was never just, it's never really been about our parenting journey. Yeah. So right. the people like you, who it, who it is, I, I just admire you so much for taking a stand and for really, you know, taking these, these hits and these jerks and really just putting them in their place in your brain, like compartmentalizing and realizing like what's, what's a valid comment and what's not. Cause that's gotta be really, really difficult as a, as a, it, are you called a blogger when you have a social account? I think so. you well, yeah. Oh. I mean, you're a blogger if you have a blog and I do have a blog, but I also okay. write for other publications. So that makes me a writer. And I also have stuff in books so that makes me an author. There's so many different levels of it, but, um, I, I do it because I didn't leave a corporate job and the safety of a paycheck that I knew I was getting every month to like write about, you know, do it yourself lunch boxes. Like I didn't, that's great if that's your, your gig, but I really wanted women to not feel all of the things that I felt. And I understand I can't change the world. I can't get to everybody, but if I have my little pocket of people who feel better in my space and I continue to get messages from people thanking me for not feeling so alone because I was able to vocalize something they couldn't, mm -hmm. then it's great. And it's, you know, it's so funny because every time I write something that I feel like this is going to be good, this is going to get a lot of support. I'm not going to have any haters. I, I'm blown away by the negative comments. Like I wrote an article about my kids and how I can't stand when people use the term half sister because my kids are technically half sisters. Mm -hmm. We don't use that term. They're sisters. There's no, you don't, mm -hmm. The amount of people who were like, well, you're lying to your children because they are half sisters. And I'm like, dude, they know they came from different fathers. There's no lie. I just don't feel like they need to go around and like be so formal and be like, we are half sisters. <laughs> people are such assholes that mm -hmm. they can't even look at like heartfelt accounts that millions of people put out there every day. And well, they, and that's just terminology. That's something that's important for your family. Like that's not even to like do with anything. That doesn't that nothing, care nothing. about. Yeah, I mean that's nothing. not a safety issue or a health issue. Like yeah, that's just like not. my kids think they have an Aunt Tracy. Yeah. By the way, definitely not related. <laughs> they haven't really thought about how that's actually not. But that's but, their Aunt but Tracy. That's your thing. So imagine someone coming in and being like. You're lying. <laughs> You're a liar. Like, it's nothing. Ridiculous. Okay, great. I'm lying. I mean, it's, and it's funny because my older daughter is getting to the age now. She knows what I do. She's not allowed on social media, but I will see sometimes in like her, you know, she has a Chromebook for school and I'll see in her search bar wine and cheeses. I'm like, oh shit, because. <gasps> oh no, that's oh, like my no. biggest no. nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm, that's why I, I try and be careful. Like I definitely post things that are inappropriate. My biggest fear really is that she'll go on and see like the ads for sex toys that I get paid to post. And, I'm, and then she'll be like, mom, what's uh, this? And I'm like, it's work, babe. It's work. Health. It's health. It, it it's is paying for your braces. <laughs> that's how your braces came to be. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. you know, but, but it opens up a whole bag of worms because I'm here. I am living my life online. Everything is very public. I try very carefully to pick and choose the stuff I share specifically about my kids, knowing that one day they're going to read it. And I don't want them to be like, what is wrong with you? Why did you say that? Yeah. But she's at the age now where we talk a lot about it. Like, I would like to write an article about this. Are you okay with it? And mm. it's, it's a really interesting thing because you don't think about all this stuff being evergreen and that one day our kids are going to, like, your kids are going to search one oh, day and see all, all this stuff. And so it's, it's a really, like, paralyzing thing sometimes because on one hand, I'm like, all right, I am doing God's work here. I'm, like, making women feel, like, less alone. Mm -hmm. I'm showing them that I'm just like them. And I'm like, but, oh, shit, my daughter one day is going to, 
Google and see the article I wrote about her stepdad's vasectomy. Like, I don't even know where to draw the line anymore because it's all out there. And I want to be real and authentic and I want her to live a real and authentic life. I'm just not ready for her to see it all yet and to see what other people put out there. And that's been my biggest hesitation too, with her having her own access to social media. I mean, well, sure, friends it's a, all have it. Once She's you, yeah. I mean, once you open up that door, they have unlimited well, access to everything, anything. anything. And think about all the stuff we're talking about with like the assholes who come on and comment and say nasty things. I want to save her from that. I don't want her. I'm a grown woman. I can deal with it. Yeah. She is a little girl. So yeah. this is why there's so much bullying and it's not just mom shaming. It's kids shaming each other. It's and, and kids shame each other when they see moms shame each other. It is mm-hmm. inherited. If you, if your mom is a mean girl and you grow up thinking that's normal because that's your mother and you love her and respect her, the chances of you maybe having some mean girl behavior. I mean, I'm no doctor or mathematician, but I'm going to say it's pretty fucking high. Mm-hmm. Let me you ask know? you this. Cause this is something we've been kind of going through lately. I, my daughter is nine. Our daughters are nine. And so socially things are starting to really change and you're, and you're seeing like these groups and these clicks and these things. And then there's mom friends that we have that, you know, I don't, the mom is not a mean girl, but their kid is. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to like connect the dots and try to like, cause you generally, we kind of say, you know, if somebody's bullying or somebody's being rude, it's like, look, listen, hurt people, hurt people. Yep. Let's have sympathy. And I know it's hurtful. And if they are threatening to you or like there was a kid in Georgia's class who told her that Jews didn't belong there. Oh um, she stood up for her the second it ha- she stood up for herself. The second it happened, the kid went to the principal's office, but he's been a complete dick ever since. Uh, oh my so like God. that's, that kid is like obviously comes from a, you know, comes mm-hmm. from a family yeah. without. He didn't, make he didn't learn it from nowhere. He didn't no. learn it from nowhere. So, but then there's just, the girls who inherently are growing into their own skin Mm -hmm. and are kind of, you know, everyone kind of grows into their own role and their social status. Right. So I'm watching certain kids like with their like posse of little minions, you know, Mm -hmm. but like, we also like know their parents and I'm trying to understand and something that kind of clicked in my head the other day. I feel like as a mom, if friendships and your relationships with other women or men, whatever your friendships are, if they are very important to you and you model that, your kids will be kinder. Mm-hmm. This is what I this agree. is the conclusion that I came to. But I agree with that. I think that's a very valid line of thinking. I mean, I'm sure it has flaws along the way, but that logically makes sense. Doesn't it? Well, it's, yeah. there's, you know, it's that whole, my husband and I were talking about this last night. There's the whole like, social climbing and, you know, uh, strategically putting your kids, you want them to play with this person because you want to be friends with that mom for whatever reason, or, oh, you know what, we're not going to go do that. We're not going to go to that party because blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, And kids pick up on that and they pick up on Mm -hmm. uh, where you, you place value in terms of other humans. That's a really good point. Yeah. And I, I don't think there's one, I don't think there's one impetus to mean girls too. I think that it could absolutely come from example when they grow up in a household like that, like I mentioned, I think it could also come from parents being totally oblivious and checked out and thinking that yeah. their kids are angels of the earth and that they do no wrong. And they don't even like, they don't even pay attention to who they're talking to. Like I am a helicopter parent when it comes to my kid's phone. And anything online, homework, whatever it is, I read her text messages. Like, I just don't think that kids are equipped to deal with the bullying behavior that comes from text messages. Things get lost in translation, right? How many times have you texted a friend and you read something, meaning it, you know, you put it out there and then the friend is like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you being a bitch? Like what's, and you're like, I, I, there was no tone in it. Yeah. Or not. Kids don't have the faculties to understand that. And so I can't tell you how many times I've seen things break out over group text messages with 11 year olds because somebody said, so it's like, you have to, as a parent be checked in because if you're not checked in and you're, even if you're doing everything right and you're not a mean girl, your kids are going to just gravitate towards the people they're hanging out with and their behaviors. And so you have to be hands-on. So, okay, this is what I'm talking about though. So that's a stand, right? You just said something definitive. This is what you think parents should be. Yes. You know? And and this is what I'm getting at. It's because we we say these, these grand sweeping things that are like, we're all in this together. We're all doing the best we can. But the truth is that there are there are basic level things that I think we and that we all have these uh 
we all have these like uh, low hanging fruits, right? Mm -hmm. And they may be different, but at some point you're saying, you know, parents have to be checked in. So at what point, and I'm not saying you should be a jerk about it online. Right. But at what point can you just say, man, you're not, you're not dialed into your kids and it's causing XX and X or, or what, at what point can you say, you know, I just don't agree with the way that mom is raising her kids or what she's doing. But you isn't know? that when a band of mothers is important? Because again, it's none of us are perfect. We are, are all just doing the best that we can, you would hope. And so that's when that's when you do call out your friend yeah. and you say, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I know little Johnny as, as, as well as anyone I'm, I'm like his aunt and I feel like you're missing this thing. And how can I support you? How can I lift you up? How can well, that's it, but that's it. You came from a place of support, right? You're not saying your son's being a dick and you need to do something about it because you're checked out. That is like, again, all the defenses go up, the walls go up, but I think you have to, number one, have that relationship with someone. You have to have people in your life that feel comfortable being candid with you, even if they know it's going to hurt you um, unintentionally. But I think the way you just said it, if I, my best friend who was like my sister, mm -hmm. if her son was doing something, I would absolutely say, listen, I love you. And I know this is probably hard and maybe you don't see it because you're so close to it, but I noticed this and I don't want you to have an issue with other kids in his class or teachers or whatever. I think if you come from a place of genuine support and not judgment, it's perceived differently. And it's a very fine line and it's complicated and it's probably different for everyone and subjective, but I think that if we don't speak up when we see things that are going to affect other kids, we're doing ourselves and our kids a disservice. And it's hard because that's a tough spot to be in because you feel like the asshole. You feel like Dude, the one who's... It, to your point earlier, if also if you don't speak up when you're struggling. Right. You know, you know when your kid, you as a mom, whether you act like it or not, you know if your kid's the one, you, you certainly know how many times the principal's calling. You know that your kid may be uh, going down the rabbit hole on social mm -hmm. or looking up stuff or acting, you know, making other kids say, like, you know, you definitely know when something's wrong in Denmark. And it doesn't mean you know how to deal with it. No, right. but that's the point. But what you're saying is if you, that's great. If you don't, none of us know how to deal with it. The point is that you at least can say, I need help or I don't know how acknowledge to acknowledge it, acknowledge it. To it about, can I talk about right. it with someone? Can I talk about it with a girlfriend who I really trust, who is just going to be there from a place of support? I mean, how many times have you and I just been like crying over, you know, things that we don't know how to handle? We don't mm -hmm. know, but we can talk to each other about it. Thank God. We can post about it on Band of Mothers. <laughs> we can post about it on Band of Mothers. <laughs> but, you know, but to, to be able to even just recognize that you're in a bad way so or whatever. And here's what I've noticed too about the whole girlfriend dynamic is I grew up where I live now in South Florida. I was away for 10 years in different cities, but I grew up down here. My girlfriends have been my girlfriend since I am five years old. Okay. And we are tight. We are the, the relationship you guys are describing. We have that. I didn't realize how rare it was mm -hmm. until my kids started school and I started to meet other moms who had girlfriends, but not the same, not the same the longevity of a relationship, or even if it wasn't the longevity, the candor and the openness, I didn't realize how rare that was. And so once I realized that, obviously I felt even more grateful. But the thing that makes me sad about all of it is that those people who have the more super, superficial relationships don't have what you have, what I have, they don't have it. And so when tough stuff comes up, like when I was getting divorced, I was, my older one was in preschool and I was at a preschool that was just filled with me moms, mean moms, mm -hmm. and just bitchy and, and judgy and whatever. And I kind of just put my blinders on and walked in every day and did what I needed to do. The thing I found hilarious was that once people caught wind that I was going through a divorce, they couldn't turn to their mean mom friends. I started getting messages from people I wasn't even friends with, but friends with on Facebook, you know, acquaintances saying, hey, um, I hope this is okay that I'm reaching out, but how did you know it was time? Like I'm struggling with this and I'm thinking this uh -huh. is the saddest, this is the saddest thing I've ever heard because they're supposed to hate me because they're in a mean mom group who clearly doesn't like me for whatever reason. So they're not supposed to fraternize with me, but they have no one to turn to because they can't go to their perfect friends with perfect facades and say, I am struggling in my marriage. I'm struggling as a mother. They can't say any of it. So they come to a complete stranger 
who they know is in the trenches to try and get some empathy. And that made me sadder than anything. And it happened, I can, I, I mean, five or six messages in a span of a week once people knew I was getting divorced. Mm. Then the other ones were trying to date my ex-husband. That was super fun too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always fascinated. Like we'll get comments on our ads and stuff of um, people who say, oh, I don't have any friends. I, I Will somebody go to this with me? Yep. And I'm like, well, you know, if there was ever a time to meet your band of mothers, it's at a pump and dump show, but yep like go or go find a boob group or a church group or, Mm -hmm. you know, there, there there's so many, especially, I just feel like in the last 10 years or so, um, communities, uh, for moms, you have to be willing to put yourself out there a little bit because, yeah, but I tried to find a boob group and I've never felt worse and lower in my life. (laughs) Never. I've never, go ahead. Well, I just, I remember I've told the story too, like sitting in a boob group that I drove 40 minutes to, because there wasn't a lot. I was so low and so struggling and I couldn't breastfeed. And I thought, certainly if I sit around with a bunch of moms, they'll help me, you know, I'll get some tips. And they just sat there and stared at me while I had tears going down my face, trying to breastfeed in front of everyone else who was just like, ah, and I was like, what the fuck? You know? Oh my <laughs> like, God, that's horrible. But that's, that's why, why I think, that. but that's why I think that the popularity and the growth of these parenting communities that are started on Instagram pages and Facebook pages, that's why I think they're so popular and people gravitate towards them because mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about logistically taking time out of your schedule. You don't have to like worry about meeting people in person if you're a little more introverted, but you get the benefit of having all these women who are at your fingertips and for the most part providing support, you get that. And I think that's why it's so big. I think that's why there's so many of us who do this on different levels is because we are creating those communities. They're just not, you can't go sit in a room and let someone watch you breastfeed and judge you. Instead, you're sitting behind a computer screen and participating in conversations. But I think it's just as important if that's what that person needs. Maybe that's what will give them the strength and the push to go meet someone in person when they realize that they're not alone and there's other people that they can relate to. I mean, I have seen so many online groups do meetups where they have girls nights and they start meeting each other in person because they found their people. Your yeah. people aren't always where, where they think you are. They're not always your neighbor. They're not always the PTA, you know, friend that you have. They're not always someone that you met at a gym class. Sometimes they are strangers online. And yes, that's why Catfish was created and we never <laughs> want to end up on that show, but sure. it, it, that there are people out there for everyone. Sometimes they're just not where you thought they'd be, mm. you know? fascinating that's really interesting well Rachel we could talk for (laughs) like hours I know do you guys want to come over I want to come over because I want to try on whatever I can see in your closet there that leopard this oh that's a scarf oh it's a scarf yeah oh well that's perfect for for me a leopard Shay Shay is finally acknowledging her inner leopard print like, I have so uh, much animal print that it looks like I'm like having a safari in my <laughs> in my closet. Like I looked one day, I was like, "Wow, I have a lot of animal print." I mean, oh. my wedding shoes were my wedding shoes to my second husband were animal print. Oh, that's Whoa. amazing! What animal? Um, a leopard, a cheetah. I don't know yeah. something. One of those. One amazing. Of those. A spotted cat. One of those felines. <laughs> yeah. Spotted cat. <laughs> uh, just so you guys know, we're zooming right now uh, with Rachel, and she's in her closet. That's why yeah. I'm pointing out the things behind yeah. her. <laughs> Um, but you're not the first. Would you find privacy. You're not the first. Every time, whenever I'm in here, because this is where I do my show, everyone is like, "Girl, can you pull those pink shoes down from behind you so Shut I can up, look at them?" Swear, it's great. Amazing. Okay, tell us, tell us really quickly about your Monday show. Sure. So Monday nights, I have a live stream both on Instagram and Facebook from my closet because uh, it's the only space in my house. I have no she shed. I have no office. Shop, it's so, a shop office. <laughs> shop office. This is it. So every Monday I go live from here and we always discuss a topic of the day. Like this past week, we talked about moments that humbled you as a mother. Ooh, um, and it's usually that. hilarious. Yeah. my It was spurred because my daughter looked at me in the shower and said, were your boobs ever round? <sighs> and I was like... I mean, Uh-oh. do you want to move out now or later? Should I yeah. have your, I mean, so, you know, First but we talk, talk, about, talk about what actual boobs look like right, and why I've been right. reading Cosmopolitan. Right. But, um, but only round with silicone. <laughs> but it's an offshoot of this whole community stuff we've been talking about for us to just get together every week and fetch and, and bitch. And what time is it up? It is at 830 Eastern every Monday night. Love it. Love it. We're going to, we'll, your we'll tag you. We'll post. That remind you guys I well. love that um well obviously Rachel we need to get back on and talk about other things um yes. anytime we, we do want to come over absolutely <laughs> we you do said, there's plenty of room 
I and know. I gonna, wish we were going to Florida. I know, but you're going to be, you're going to be at our West Palm beach show and you're going to yes. meet our, our, uh, Midwest cast, Angela and Molly. And, um, so for you guys listening, if you go to that show, you can meet Rachel in person. She Can't won't wait. slap you across the face. She no, will I'm super on. friendly, super friendly. And, um, yeah, tune in at live on Monday nights from her closet and follow. I do and see those. It. I do see those pink shoes. Yeah. yeah. And follow yeah. wine, <laughs> wine and cheese. Right. Wine, wine with an H. <laughs> there you go. At I wine and cheese. It's this is yes. Rachel. So Rachel, thank you. We're going to, we're going to pick up another conversation with you later. Thank so you delightful guys. to finally get to have you. So thank, thank you, you for joining us. It's awesome. Thank you guys. Mm-hmm. You're an awesome mom, Rach. You guys too. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. This is a great joy of ours to be able to talk with you and at you every single week. And if you want to keep the conversation going and join our Band of Mothers movement, there's three ways you can do that. First of all, please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to this podcast um, and leave a review if you feel so inclined. That helps us spread our message to more moms and get our show out there to more people. Second, go ahead and go to your app store and download the Band of Mothers app. This is the mom group you have been craving your whole life. It is off traditional social media. We have a zero troll and bullying policy. There are groups for every kind of mom for you to really drill down and connect with other moms going through the same things that you are dealing with, whether it's in your parenting life or your woman life. Um, there's, and then you can access the podcast from the app. You can access all of the pump and dump show ticket dates from the app. There's so much for you and it's growing every single day. So download the band of mothers app and third, go buy tickets to the pump and dump show. That's right. Grab your breeder friends and make a night of it. Um, you can also continue these podcast conversations in the podcast discussion group on the app. And one more big thank you to goodbye gear for being our sponsor for this week's show. Um, check them out at goodbyegear.com. See you next week.